ODD here. What's up, everybody? Though this video applies to all professional sports, I want to focus on the NFL. I know that the video thumbnail that I made is probably overly dramatic for those with the wrong idea of what the Illuminati actually is. The documented order from 1776 may be long gone, maybe not. Another group may or may not have hijacked the name and changed the goals of the organization. One thing is for sure, the Illuminati does exist as it's referred to today by many conspiracists, including myself. Being that the Illuminati is a blanket term for several secret societies, wealthy, powerful, and influential organizations and people, all of which have a much greater potential to be privy to certain knowledge and information that the average person just does not. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> I don't blame people for not believing in it. Not only have we been conditioned since birth, but many conspiracists are no good at defending the subject, and a lot of their methods for convincing others are ineffective for whatever reason, like lack of research or the inability to express oneself properly. Another thing I'd like to say before we get started is that this video is not to bash on NFL fans. One of my best friends is so obsessed with the Denver Broncos, he may as well be the barrel man. A fan so dedicated that the NFL made a bobblehead for him. However, I'm not fond of the NFL whatsoever. I mean, I used to be, but now I, I just want to see them exposed. And if that pisses you off, then so be it. I would suppose that there's only so much you could teach somebody that's utterly fascinated by grown men throwing and catching a ball. If you're still with me, let's get into it. Bread and circuses. The phrase is used to describe the generation or creation of public approval, not through exemplary or excellent public service or public policy, but through diversion, distraction, or the mere satisfaction of the immediate shallow requirements of the populace. This phrase was used by a Roman writer to deplore the declining heroism of the Romans after the Roman Republic ceased to exist and the Roman Empire began. Two things only the people anxiously desire, bread and circuses. The government kept the Roman populace happy by distributing free food and staging huge spectacles. During the reign of Claudius, there were 159 official holidays on the Roman calendar, a reality that's not conducive for productivity. Idle time and poverty are two ingredients that fuel crime. As a result, the emperors sought ways to keep the masses entertained. They turned increasingly to sport. Roman leaders used sport activities to train soldiers and provide the masses with entertainment spectacles. For the Romans, sports became a show, a dramatic event staged for the purpose of diversion. Rome's citizens had become lazy. They had transformed into a nation of spectators, more content with watching other people play sports and athletics than performing such activities themselves. It could be argued that the United States has become a nation of spectators, much like in ancient Rome. Another thing that I found interesting, on the next page it says, During a halftime or a lunch break, executions would be performed against those convicted of capital offenses. Burning at the stake or crucifixion was a common method of execution. These also served to entertain the Roman spectators. The Creation of American Football On November 6th, 1869, Rutgers and Princeton played what was billed as the first college football game. However, it wasn't until the 1880s that a great rugby player from Yale, Walter Camp, pioneered rules changes that slowly transformed rugby into the new game of American football. Walter was a skull and bones. If you do a quick search on him, you'll find a few other names of people that helped create American football. Those names are Amos Alonzo Stagg, Pop Warner, and Fielding Yost all of which either belong to Skull and Bones or Freemasons. According to another video on YouTube, link is in the description, after the NFL was created in 1922, most, if not all of the earliest franchises had strong ties to the horse race industry and gambling. That seems nothing less than common sense. I would love a smoking gun, but seriously, rich people trying to get richer, common sense. I did find that Burt Bell was a Phi Kappa Sigma, which is another Skull and Bones type fraternity. Here's a card from the Illuminati card game. 
Whether or not the creators of the game meant to expose truths and accurately portray catastrophic events is up for debate, but a lot of the cards are dead on, and this one is no different. In the game, the card is used to gain control over another group by using distraction. In reality, these things are going on. We sit and watch numerous amounts of these three-hour events while bigger and much more important things are going on all around us. Types of things that will prove crucial to the freedoms and well-being of ourselves and our loved ones. Have you guys noticed the upheaval in political structure in the NFL? Getting into a stadium is now like going through the TSA at the airport. Pink uniforms for breast cancer but nothing about prostate cancer? I'm sure this helps recruit a bigger female fan base. Not only that, but the money generated by the NFL during Breast Cancer Awareness Month is astounding, and only 5% goes to finding a cure. After the Sandy Hook drill in 2012, the NFL became shrill gun control advocates. And here, I can't find any solid evidence, but it's clear that the NFL stadiums can and will be used as FEMA camps, along with any other major sports facilities. In 2011, Hank Williams Jr., the Monday Night Football song guy, was permanently dropped by the NFL three days after he referred to Hitler while talking about President Obama. Before that, Hank's song was used in every Monday Night Football game since 1989. Come to think of it, Obama and Hitler do share many striking similarities. Please do a little bit of research before you start foaming out of your mouth. American Wars and the Patriots. I find it strange that each time America kicks off a war after the new millennium, the Patriots win the Super Bowl. 2001, the owners of the Twin Towers and other really rich people destroyed their own shit, killing thousands of people, blamed Afghanistan, and invaded their country, followed by the Patriots winning the Super Bowl in 2002. In 2003, the US started it up with Iraq, followed by the Patriots winning the Super Bowl in 2004. In 2004, America went to war with Northern Pakistan, followed by the Patriots winning the Super Bowl in 2005. In 2014, we started going at it with the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL, as President Obama likes to say, followed by, you guessed it, the Pats winning the Super Bowl in 2015 dubbing them America's team all over the media, even though the most recent NFL poll shows otherwise, and fan votes don't even match that. In the 2002 Super Bowl right after 9-11, George H.W. Bush flipped the coin and became the first president, past or present, to do so in person. You two perform the halftime show, and that's only more revealing being that Bono has obviously been illuminated. He has ties with royalty and many powerful people all over the world. He pretty much spends most of his time running in political circles, just kicking it with warmongers, liars, and people that openly aspire to depopulation. Here's George H.W. Bush at the 2004 Patriots Super Bowl as well. Not flipping a coin this time. But here he is flipping the coin at the 2012 Texans-Bills game, again in 2012 at the Texans-Titans game, Harris Bush Jr. flipping a coin at the 2009 inaugural game between the Giants and the Cowboys. Here he is again on September 11th, 2011, 10 years exactly after 9-11, flipping the coin for the Cowboys and the Jets. And one more thing I found from 2013 at a Texans Raiders game. What's up with presidents and the NFL? They are all cut from the same cloth. Political leaders shouldn't be this involved. It only tells me one thing. They are helping people become even more enthralled by the idea of grown men throwing and catching a ball. Bob Kraft, owner of the Patriots, publicly gifted George Bush in 2004 and 2005 with the number one jersey. Halftime shows after the new millennium started getting really wild. The Janet Jackson incident became one of the biggest news stories America has ever seen, going on to break two Guinness World Records. It makes me terribly curious why America takes the bait every time. The Janet Jackson thing was on purpose and for a reason, to divert our attention. That year, not only did we kick off a war with Pakistan, but we had the Abu Ghraib scandal, where American soldiers were taking happy pictures with dead bodies while torturing living people and others. 
This shit makes me sick. I feel a fire burning inside of me when I look at these photos. I'm not the only one. When folks started getting upset about this, this is what they give us. It becomes the most talked about so-called news for years to come. And of course we have mucho Illuminati symbolism in a few of the following halftime shows. Madonna, 2012, ushering in the occult gimmicky new age entertainment for the age of Aquarius. Beyonce in 2013, doing the bullshit Rockefeller diamond. Here she is acting as Shiva, the great god known as the destroyer or the transformer. We have this statue outside of CERN, also known as the Nataraj or Lord of the Dance, still Shiva. CERN said that they had a great year in 2013. 2014, Bruno Mars, yeah, whatever. 2015, Katy Perry, yeah, whatever. Pointing out stuff that my kids can point out is getting really old. Speaking of getting old, Jay-Z. Let me explain Jay-Z for you in a way that maybe you could understand. I'm still talking about the NFL because we have all these players throwing up the diamond. Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys. Bob Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots. He's just down with the rock, right? Rockefeller. He's down with the Rockefeller, right? Wrong. You just don't end up a Freemasonic rapper with his own record label that's named after an extremely powerful white bloodline. The current representation for this bloodline is David Rockefeller, who admittedly aspires to a new world order. Here's Jay wearing a jacket with the quote from Satanist Aleister Crowley. Not only that, his clothing line, Rockaware, is blatantly riddled with gimmicky occult symbolism, but the fact that he is a Freemason, supposedly a Master Mason, gives these clothes a little more meaning. I'm going to take a break and show you all a video of Alan Watt and his take on professional sports. About a hundred years ago, this big organization with many branches uh, they wanted to rule the world, basically, using Britain as a nucleus of, of a system, an embryo, uh, which also was going to be joined with the U.S. Uh, under the Anglo-American establishment. Uh, wrote about the kind of culture and the changes of culture over a hundred year period that they would actually design, implement and bring in. And um, H.G. Wells talked about it too. He talked about arenas. He says arenas could be put up across the world for sports, for instance. Now at that time, sports was something that children, uh, school children were into. Adults became adults and got onto adult things. So it was unimaginable at the time that people could actually believe that uh, uh, there was even a need for adult sports and entertainment, never mind having ar arenas built across the world. But he said, we can do this. And you know, voiced basically a sports culture for the males Using a tribal system, we're all tribal to an extent, that's why we even bother to vote for a tribal leader. Uh, this is well understood, that's why we're supplied with these leaders. And because the, the average man was to become more disengaged from his own destiny, as the expert class arose, it was decided that, that the males would get their, their, their outlet, basically. Um, being gradually becoming helpless as, as males through sports. Therefore, they'd have a tribal team they could identify with, uh, they could um, cheer them on as they were winning. In their own personal lives, they were getting nowhere. They were getting disenfranchised, in a sense, as experts took over um, decision-making for them in all kinds of fields. So this was psychology at use, uh, planned before they even implemented the sports. Uh, when radio came along, of course, they, they, they used that to the maximum. Uh, sports for the men, um, soaps basically for the women. And then in came television, as I say, with its alpha state, its hypnotic state. And sure enough, around the 1960s, really, 50s and 60s, it took off. It really, really took off. Uh, and men became glued on Saturday nights to the sports shows. A culture industry, which is called by its own the culture industry. The Soviet Union had a department called the culture industry. Their actors and directors were called the cultural leaders. 
leaders because they would, like a computer, people are like computers, um, all you have to do is keep giving them new updates every so often and you can change an entire country or a nation or a block of nations who are all getting the same uploads, upgrades at the same time. A game for tribal males. I've noticed my whole life that fans of opposing teams are willing to brutalize each other for no reason. I say no reason, but they would say, don't talk shit about my team or my team is losing so I'm mad and I want to fight. Like I said, no reason. The team is not theirs and the team doesn't give one shit about them. Here's some guys bad mouthing the opposing team at a game. The following year, one of the players went on to play for the Raiders. It's just an easy job and some money to those guys. And it's actual feelings to you, you know, to everybody else. It's sad. Grown people all over the world act like this. I don't know where you live, but in Denver, I'm weirded out by the football mascot, which is just a white horse or a pale horse. I just think it's odd because we have another horse that looks like a demon outside of our airport, and he's in the same pose. And here's a cover of a book called The Montauk Project. It's about time travel experiments, and that horse is in the same pose too. I know it ain't nothing, I'm just pointing it out, okay? Um, Katy Perry's song, Dark Horse, where she asks over and over if you're ready for a perfect storm. Here we got Miley Cyrus posing naked on a horse. There's something to these horses. I believe that there is more to the horses in Colorado though. The airport was built or funded by Freemasons. John Elway is a lifetime member of the Masons. No, I don't think all Freemasons are bad. Probably just the rich ones or a group within a group of those guys. I have a friend who joined the Masons and he swears up and down that there's no conspiracy. I trust that he believes that but I told him that there's no way an average community Freemason is going to be let in on the game. Never mind all that. I have a few more things to go over. Storylines. Whether good or bad, pay attention. Or don't. I'd recommend you don't. But it's all to hype the NFL only. Um, they have over-sensationalized and heavily dramatic, drawn-out, scripted storylines. And you could just tell, man. I mean, I really can't prove it, but... Come on, it's obvious. They verse family members in the Super Bowl, friends, ex-teammates. Uh, they just they make it to where people want to watch this shit like it's some sort of dramatic TV reality show. I'm not going to dig anything up for this one because I would never finish the video. There's just too much out there. I'm not the only one that feels this way. Let's listen to a few others, even sports fans that are stressing the same point. Basically put, the NFL is controlled, um, all of television is controlled by the Illuminati. Um, Steve Burns, Bornstein, uh, CEO of the NFL Network, president of ESPN, he is a well-known Illuminatist, um, CBS president, Illuminati. The media controls everything, and my belief is Tim Tebow's Christianity belief got too big for them where they couldn't control it and they fabricated lies in the media is and we as sports fans we believe half the crap they tell sports analysts tell us on tv merrill hodge and trent dilfer speak we all listen and we all think oh tim tebow's not this tim tebow's not that all rookies have to sign an endorsement co contract with the nfl basically stating all their endorsements the NFL gets a percentage of, here's the kicker, unless the endorsements are go to charity. The percentage of Tim Tebow's endorsements didn't go to the NFL. All of them went to charity. He put that in his contract. What does that show the NFL? They're not going to make any money off of Tim Tebow. None. They make jersey sales, but all his endorsements and stuff, they all went to his charities. Now, speaking of charities, it never gets brought up. The dude has opened 12 hospitals across the world. Year 2012 alone, he raised over $100 million for charities across the world. Doesn't get brought up. You never hear it. Here is the other big kicker. 
It's his little T-Bowen thing. He trademarked it. He did sign a contract with Nike. Nike and the NFL wanted to make money off the T-Bowen thing. He refused. He said, if any money's made off of it, it goes to charity. Didn't make the NFL and Nike too happy because T-Bowen became really, really popular. And Christianity isn't what the Illuminati wants. People can say, oh, he doesn't know how to throw this and that. But there's a bigger picture that people don't see. You are dealing with a motherfucking illusion. You're not dealing with no real game, people. You're not dealing with no real game. If you don't wake up and realize that this shit is WWE, bullshit ass, scripted ass bullshit, if you don't realize this stuff is all about casino money, broadcasting network money, and NFL owner money, if you don't realize it's about those three things, you're gonna have to you gonna have to run you 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 gay ass homosexual ass Freemason ass Satan worshiping ass NFL owners gonna have to run that shit by somebody else. Cause I'm not buying it. What's going on, YouTube? I don't normally make videos about sports because I don't watch sports anymore. For a while now I haven't watched sports. I look at sports like I look at Hollywood and the music industry, and I and I believe in my heart that sports is fixed in a way that the average person can't understand it. If the NFL isn't fixed, why do most sports associations have the same style logo? There is no official agency that oversees the creation of these logos. If the NFL isn't fixed, why is the referee selection process for the Super Bowl so upsetting and highly questionable? If the NFL isn't fixed, why do the 32 teams recognize themselves as one entity and split 75% or more of the total annual income? Something is definitely wrong with the NFL, and I think it's Peyton Manning's forehead. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.